Welcome to Labor on the Job. I'm the host, Steve Zeltzer. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the issue of bullying, what it is, how it affects workers and the public, and what people can do about it. And joining us are some guests who have a lot of knowledge about this subject of bullying. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce my guests. My first is uh, Rhea uh, Settles. Welcome to the show, Rhea. Thank you. And you're a teacher? I'm an educator. I'm currently um, a vice principal. I see. At a high school in the K through 12 system. And how long have you been teaching? Uh, this is my 21st year. Okay. 21st so year. So, a long time battle in the schools. A, a long time battle in schools, and and I I think that what makes it really strange even to to be here is because most people don't believe that this type of behavior occurs in schools because young people are there. So. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. And also joining us is Carrie Clark. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you. And you also have had some experience with bullying and also have been a teacher. Yes, I was a high school English teacher for 20 years. And um, I've been an advocate for bullied uh, targets of workplace abuse in the past decade. S and so you've been organizing around this issue? Yes. And educating people? Yes, that's, that's my new calling. Okay, well, thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Happy to be here. Also joining us is Dr. Ruth Nami. Welcome to the show, Hi. Dr. Ruth. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Nami. And you have been studying this issue, or you're familiar with this issue? Well, uh, you might say I might, I'm probably the reason for the season here. I um, was bullied in um, the uh, mid-1990s, and um, from that, the studies grew, and my husband and I founded an institution, and we do research and write books and work with targets of bullying. So you decided that, uh, that there had to be some serious examination about this whole subject. Yes, sir. After the way I was hurt and how ill I became, and after I'd worked through that, we decided we really needed to look at it and find out how we could help other people. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. And also joining us is Gary Namey. Welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you, Steve. And you're also one of the co-founders of this organization that you're... you're right. In its current, current form, it's the Workplace Bullying Institute, and I'm the director, and, and it's got um, the research and education arm, and we go all around the country talking about it, do a lot of media on workplace bullying, but we also are advocates for state-based uh, uh, legislation for the healthy what we call the Healthy Workplace Bill to bring anti-bullying uh, legal reform. So you're doing both education and organizing? We are. I see. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us on the show. And last but not least, uh, Dr. Bill Lepowski. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. And you also have been uh, experienced bullying and also organized against it and are trying to educate people about it. Yes. I'm a teacher at Laney College in Oakland. And uh, for the first 32 years of my career there, I never knew about it, but I encountered it. And uh, I've helped educate folks in my district about this problem. Okay, well, it sounds like we have a lot of people with a lot of experience here <laughs> at, this, at this table. What exactly is bullying? Um, people say bullying, what, what is it? I mean, some people think it's natural, it happens, nothing can be done about it. Um, well, let me define it. Okay. It's, it, it, workplace bullying is health-harming mistreatment, so we want to distinguish it from incivility. It's not rude, rudeness or boorishness. It's not little insignificant stuff. We're talking about a full-bore, systematic, interpersonal campaign of destruction. And it takes the form of either verbal abuse or conduct that's threatening, humiliating, or intimidating, or it actually prevents work from getting done. It's a form of work interference. It's all about the bully's personal agenda getting accomplished, undermining legitimate business interests of either for uh, Bill's situation, uh, community college or the, the public schools or uh, a private sector health clinic for Ruth's story. But it, that's, that's the way we define it in the law. And it's very important that we make it about serious, abusive, health-harming mistreatment. We're not talking about an arched eyebrow, an inadvertent glance, and it's also not conflict. It's very important that people understand it's not traditional conflict, therefore it will not be solved by the so, traditional tools. So what you're saying is this is a health and safety issue in the workplace? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So it's a health and safety issue, and that's yes. uh, not conducive to a healthy workplace environment if you have this kind of atmosphere of bullying. Yes. And we actually have some videotape. Um, it turns out that there was apparently uh, a, a bullying incident uh, in the Richmond School District in California 
And unfortunately, in this instance, the teacher who complained about the bullying was actually made a victim for complaining about bullying, and her name was uh, Jenny Mo. So we're going to go to that uh, audio uh, videotape, and then we'll come back to you mm -hmm. to get some details. Welcome back to Labor on the Job, and that was the story of one teacher who uh, apparently was the victim of bullying, uh, not only against her, but she tried to stop the bullying against her students. Now, what do you think about this, this story here? Does this uh, ring some bells as to what's happening? Ring. It really rings bells with me um, because that's classic what happens in a, in a school district. And being an administrator and having been an administrator for so many years, if you're an administrator who will not join in with the targeting and mobbing that one person, then you become a target. And that basically is what occurred with, with me is not wanting to join in. And, and refusing to, and you become, you become a list, you get on the list too. <laughs> You're on the, on the bad list. Uh, <laughs> you get now, on the Now this idea of mobbing, what, what is exactly mobbing, Carrie? Uh, mobbing is a colloquial term used most often in the European uh, theater to uh, suggest a group of people that will go after a, a single individual target. And um, it l seems to get lost a little bit in the translation in the United States. Uh, but oftentimes, uh, bullies are a single individual who will target one person. But a really good bully has years of experience knowing how to manipulate other people into helping uh, perpetuate the abuse that a target uh, suffers. So this is sometimes a long-going practice. Uh, Dr. Nami, what were you Mobbing and bullying are, are synonymous. It's just the, the founder of the whole international movement and you can trace it back to the to the mid 90s of the research uh, the fellow's name was Heinz Lehmann he was uh, a German researcher actually he was a German interior decorator turned psychiatrist <laughs> and he uh, so his career paths aren't always linear you see and he established the world's first work trauma clinic and he had about 60 folks who had been seriously emotionally injured at work and he studied them, and he was the first to document the linkage between this severe form of mistreatment, which he did not want to call bullying because he reserved it for the childhood stuff. And so he made it, he called it mobbing, and therefore it's the European term. But it is the same phenomenon. And, and the marvelous thing about Lehman's work, the first articles were published in the early 90s, uh, was that he, he saw a form of PTSD, post-traumatic stress, as severe, if not more severe, than folks from war zones and folks that suffer natural disasters and the rest. And this is a major, you talked about health harm. That is one of the most extreme ones. And actually at this table, you're for the, the, I, I don't know about Rhea, but I know these two women, Ruth and Carrie, have suffered uh, PTSD. And uh, Carrie's had a very, and she, she can tell her own story. But that's how severe So it it's get. a very uh, stressful and, and uh, physically debilitating to be under this kind of uh, circumstance. Now, Bill, you were teaching at uh, Laney College, and, and uh, you were under this kind of bullying and, and attack. What, what happened with you? Well, I was uh, actually, I was um, the chair of my department, and I kind of came to the defense of another individual who was subjected to what I considered to be mistreatment. And much as perhaps what happened to the teacher in that video clip, I then became the target of... Uh, you were the problem. I became the problem, <laughs> and I was targeted with various forms of abuse. Um, I, was I found myself living in a, a hellish kind of Alice in Wonderland, make-believe nonsense world where logic was ignored, there was no due process, there was no justice. Uh, it made no sense to me until a friend of mine who herself had been targeted uh, told me about the book that Gary and Ruth wrote called The Bully at Work. And I read that book, and things began to make sense. That is, I was still living in a crazy, insane world with no justice, but I understood it because it was described in the book. And, I mean, Rhea, what, what happens to somebody who comes under this uh, kind of pressure? I mean, if you don't go along with, you know, going after target. somebody <laughs> with the target. I mean, in other words, you either target. you are the target or you're not going to go along with going after the target. You're, you're the problem, and what do they say to you? I mean, that why? Well, in school districts, you, you often don't know, and you, you don't know that you are actually stepping on someone's 
tolls because mm -hmm. they're all in really in it in it together and and in my case it was just simply at a school site and trying to just put some systems in place that were not there in place and just by doing that simple task as an attendance system of how students would if they were tardy or are are um, absent how they would what kind of system would and and the principal was very close to the attendance person and so so they had an arrangement and they didn't want you interfering and in that and you can just walk into something like that and then you're or um, a teacher that that they're targeting and they don't want them to be the department chair and so they want that person out and they would like for you to join in to help get that person out of that position and if you ask questions or you just don't join in you're exposing this behavior this intimidation and and I really believe that it, it is personal it, it has nothing to do especially in 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 a school district it has nothing to do with the achievement of young people it has to do with this is this person's personal beliefs are that the, this is what they want to see happen to another person they want to see you oppressed under under them and it satisfy s them well this workplace environment Dr. Well, I was just going to back up Bill and just say that th this thing about um, isolating the target and and if you if you go to the target if you if someone is targeted nobody else wants to be with you what happened to me is is very similar is that when I went to my coworkers, I was working um, in a big medical clinic and doing uh, work as a therapist. And what, I went. Was this at a hospital? This or? was at a big hospital system. Yes, in in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And what I, was it? Can you talk about it? At a it? big hospital system okay. in the a Bay big, Area. A big <laughs> hospital systems. Okay, that's it's okay. It's a, a pretty big one. Okay. Um, <laughs> big buns on the side. And. <laughs> 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 And so I went to my coworkers one by one, and I said, do you see what's happening? And they said, oh, yeah, we see it. That's happened before. And I said, well, you know, can you help me? Can you tell me? Can you work with me, help me make her lo like me? What can I say? What can I do? I'd because like that was part of your job be as a therapist, helping people out, trying well, to get I people to work together to solve their, their own problems. Well, I worked with them, and I wanted to work with my coworkers, and I had never encountered this in my whole career before. That oh, was the stunner, it. that I had had a full career, full life. I was in my 40s, and I had never encountered anyone that had given me so much opposition, been so mean to me. And well, What did this person do to you? Behind closed doors, she would berate me. She would tell me how I didn't do my job right, how I didn't do my charts right, how I didn't look right, how I didn't look at people right. Um, in front of people, she would criticize me if I made a move. She would yell at me in the halls. She would yell down the halls at me. Everything you don't do in a setting where you're treating clients, patients, wherever you are in a quiet clinical mm -hmm. setting. And she did it day after day, month after month. And when I asked my coworkers to help me, they said, oh no. You know what? We'd rather not go to lunch with you. In fact, why don't you eat lunch by yourself and have your breaks by yourself and we'll just be over there. And you can just do that because then if she doesn't see us with you, she won't pick on us because we're with you. They were grateful they had Ruth. They thanked her. Thank God that you're here. So you're you're the, you're not you're taking yeah. you're, you're taking the it girl. You're yes. taking the punishment mm -hmm. yeah. so instead I had of us. Six so they months were of isolation. So they were totally intimidated by this this bully. Totally. Yeah, they always mm -hmm. they cower in fear. Let me interject four characteristics of targets we know from our research, and it's a heck of a portrait. Independent, self-starting people. That frustrates the crap out of a bully because it's all about their need to control someone else. They're so narcissistic, they want to control another person. And if you have your own identity and ego strength, and you dare to stand on your own two feet, well, pity to you. Second is that you're technically more skilled, so you know the job better, almost almost always. Third, sometimes they're, the bullies are considered bright star performers, but not truly. They're backed up by the targets who make them They're look They're threatened good. by somebody who might know more and than And the you. second threat <laughs> comes from the third reason. They're better liked. They can't stand someone else being well liked. And the fourth is that they're ethical whistleblowers. Everyone who is a whistleblower 
is tormented, is bullied. Not everybody who's bullied is a whistleblower. What got Carrie into trouble was her ethicality. Go ahead, tell him how you told him, how you caught him cooking the books. <laughs> well, I was uh, watchdogging soft money funding intended for the uh, education of immigrant children. And I have a background in school finance, and I'm married to a CPA who's an accounting professor. So I had access to information, and um, the uh, school superintendent came into a California school district and bled the district in 10 months from the uh, very much in the black to very much in the red, and needed to uh, come after the funds that I was watchdogging, but mostly had to get rid of me so I wouldn't let other people know so, so he wanted you out of the way. He wanted me out of the way, and it took him 10 months to destroy me. I thought my good work would protect me. Um, I loved my job, and uh, was uh, I was quite good at it, and, uh, re you know, really enjoyed it. Uh, but, um, you know, after about six months, I was starting to get quite ill. And what did this person do to, to torment you? He stalked me on the job. He cornered me alone. He uh, dismembered my work. He disenfranchised me from circles. He took me off committees. Um, he finally uh, assaulted me in the district office hallway. I thought he was going to land his fist in my teeth. So he was a very violent, it, it turned into a He was a violent. third larger than I am. And I was mortally fearful of him. Um, I knew I had enough information to put him in jail. I just didn't realize no one would care or that there was no one to tell. And the school district, what did they do about that? Um, they, um, they basically kicked him upstairs. Uh, it's a so they gave him a better job? Well, uh, they told him to go to his office and, and spend his life finding a new job. Um, they, five years after the fact, Three school board members did apologize to me, but in the meantime, it was shuffled under the rug, and he was moved on to another California s school district where he did it again. And within so there was a pattern. Of, absolutely, of this kind of he was thing. a serial bully. And after nine months, they s subpoenaed me for a restraining order that one of the teachers had to take out against him, because uh, she was the president of the teachers union, and she and her sister, who were on the school board, got too close to the money. So um, oftentimes, uh, in the course of uh, our advocacy work, we find people who are in the position of whistleblowing, they don't get a chance to pucker and blow because the bully sees them and takes a run at them before they ever get a chance to do anything. And we're talking about counterproductive. We're talking about the best and the brightest these bullies take out. And because, Steve. yeah. The, the, the union president, because this is a labor show, we, I just want to, is my memory right? She was rendered incontinent well, there was what, him? There was a teacher at the next school district who had to quit her job because she just, she would lose it. The, he made many, he, he, this man had a string of educators and, up and down the state that he had traumatized. And, I mean, the fear that workers have. They have to support their families. They have to pay oh, their yeah. bills. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on, on workers to maybe ignore or, or try to live with it or mm -hmm. escape from it. But what you're saying here is that's not the way to handle this. Well, well and, and, and also, yeah. I think even in school districts, we have to, we're forced to pay union dues. And we're and under a contract. Lot of, and we're under contract. And a lot of times, if the bully is your superior because a bully can also be someone who's not your superior but it's the person with the most influence can use an evaluation and give you an unfavorable unjustified evaluation it happened to me and there's no recourse for you you can't even grieve the content of the evaluation so they're able and the system supports them in doing it, and so you are just sitting there without any any support. Well, how did you overcome that? A lot of a lot of family, um, um, a lot of a lot of praying. I'm a firm, firm believer in 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 Creator. I'm still um, dealing with it because it, I'm I'm very fearful with with school districts, and I and I don't trust the system because because of it and and it's still not a lot of opportunity for for me to 
have access to the Human Resources Department or to unions and let them know that these are the types of things that are happening in, in school districts and you're losing really good people that the, the best people just the, yeah. the, the, they just, the they best just, uh, people that they that don't are there for the the young um, young people. I'm looking at the uh, teacher in West Contra Costa, and that's that's well. That what's was a very I mean stunning it's thing. I mean, it looked, the teacher looked very dangerous. <laughs> 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 But well, to actually bring police <laughs> onto a campus to to de take the teacher out, I mean, and then put yeah. the teacher in jail. They were mad at her. And uh, they were somebody mad at her. was mad at her. And obviously. they had the institutional power to do it. That's the thing. When in the when a union doesn't have in its bargaining agreement language an anti-bullying provision, then it's probably stuck with only what human resources department has, and that is in turn a policy only reflective of what the current state of the state and federal laws are. And that is discrimination is out. If you're a member of a protected status group and, and this is what's totally misunderstood, and your harasser, abuser, bully is not a member of a protected status group, you might be in luck to at least threaten a lawsuit. And then that means you can transfer all your wealth to an attorney. That doesn't mean you're going to win. But what's amazing is 50% of all bullying is woman on woman. So when it's same sex, same race, you get no bang for the buck out of current laws. Mm -hmm. Employers are totally non-responsive, and they blow it off. And might I say, you've got, you're hearing from education and healthcare people here. Those happen to be the two groups that call our, call our institute the most seeking help. What do you have going on? Why? Why? Because you've got an, an easily exploitable workforce of people who are do-gooders, they have a pro-social orientation, they want to help heal, sick, heal the sick, educate the world, empower others and all that. And they're so right because their nose is to the grindstone. Carrie said it, I love my job. Mm -hmm. I focus on my job. But the bully is an exploiter, Machiavellian backstabber who's going to sense who's going to be vulnerable because of the overinvestment in their job. And that's who they attack. And they do attack the best and brightest. Turnover is what should drive the employer crazy and teach them that bullies are too expensive to keep. Rather, they say, go down there and clean up that unit so they become the henchman for someone else. They're a mid-level supervisor doing the executive's dirty work. Or they're mortified at the top that this is allowed to happen. And they're, too, they're also afraid to confront the bully. Mm -hmm. The bully threatens them with lawsuits, and they just do it with impunity, Steve. So rather than dealing with the problem, basically the easiest avenue, they think, is to just let this thing happen. Let it and, go away. And let that person disappear make yes. the person disappear and then yes. the problem is over. Management. Yet it cost one and a half times mm -hmm. a worker's salary to just replace them. Just to replace them it costs that much. That doesn't talk about them down the road, doesn't talk about all the other workers around them that have been hurt. This affects other workers tremendously. Well that atmosphere, the environment oh. of intimidation, mm -hmm. of terror, uh, Throw up I mean, on Sunday. physically <laughs> threatening people. You you can't mm -hmm. talk to people. No. You're isolated. Yes. I mean, yeah. this is a, 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 a as you said earlier, a hellish situation. Mm -hmm. What uh, are, are none of us are none of us are young. All of us are I, people. I'm not that old. <laughs> 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 you're young I, at, we're well, all young at heart. Yeah. Anyway. No, but I'm <laughs> saying, well established in our careers. It's mm -hmm. not like we just went into a job and That's made it. this up. This is like no. These are the competent ones. We you worked see this. hard <laughs> to get where we were. We were all people who, who had jobs and worked hard, and, and we needed our jobs. All of us need our jobs. I think everybody who everybody watches this show. Everybody is trying to do the best they can. You to need your you job. Know, you need your benefits. It's not mm -hmm. that. You're, you're not willing to give up a job. I stayed on this job. I've been with this hospital system for a long time. I wasn't just with this bully, and I left. I stayed on that job. So did you try? How did you try to deal with it on, on the <laughs> job? And I went to my supervisor, and I was told, can't do anything. Um, how did I deal with it? I threw up before I went to work. I stopped my car on the 37 and pulled it over and threw up. I had migraine headaches at work. And she did not tell me. And I didn't tell my Because family. of the shame involved with this. So in the absence of bargaining language, in the absence of what, what can people do, we have a success story. Actually, all of these women have fought well, these back in Bill, but Bill these has are the a success These story. are the people that stood up and said, I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm yes. going to try yes. to organize to, to deal with it. And that's yes. why you've come together, why you're not only educating people, but you're actually organizing. Because yes. 
Yeah. You're, you're, what you're saying is, if you organize, you can actually do something about it. Is that yeah. the, I think, a lesson from we the think thing? You Bill? might we be hope. able to. Bill, might. you were able to do something <coughs> at, at Laney. I mean, yeah. how were you able to overcome that fear and intimidation and that kind of thing? Well, I guess the major step, uh, well, I read Gary and Ruth's book, and I realized that it was important to expose the bully. I figured I'd been there for 32 years, and I had a stellar career, and I would just, I went public with the accusations against me. It's embarrassing to put forth mm -hmm. publicly the fact that I'm being accused of various things, but they were lies and they were false. And I would figure I'd put my career on the line against my, the people accusing me and saying, look at what they are doing to me. I was lucky that my colleagues in the math department at Laney uh, stood with me and passed a resolution calling for these charges to be investigated. And that began the process. And I took those steps after I learned about the concept of bullying uh, from Gary and uh, Ruth's book. And then over the course of the next couple of years, uh, through various uh, bits of good fortune and a great deal of hard work, uh, we eventually got to the point where uh, there was a new management in charge in the district, and there was a, an anti-bullying policy that was passed by the board of trust by the uh, the board of trustees of the, so of the district. So it became a political issue, in other words, I not just an issue about Bill, but the made whole. Made it a political issue. I intentionally, issue. I intentionally made it a political issue. I basically, I know a lot about mathematics because I teach it. I didn't know anything about politics. I sort of had to invent <laughs> politics on the fly. How do, how does one do politics? Uh, mm. And uh, so I, I made the issue political. I tried to intentionally make it their problem. Uh, it was certainly my problem when I was threatened with termination. It was my problem when they ordered me evicted from my office. It they was ordered my you evicted from your office? Oh, yes. I fought that. I fought the termination threat. I fought everything they did to me. There, I think I itemized it in various places. There were half a dozen or ten different assaults on me. I fought back against every one of them. And at one point when the chancellor at that time, not the current one, and the head of HR at that time, there were a, a half a dozen top administrators allied against me. And I felt I had them surrounded. And I felt I had them surrounded because I had the truth on my side and it was only a matter of time. And it took two or three or four years depending on which particular events you look at, but eventually I was able to push back all the false accusations, all the lies, all the dishonesty. And so it was a battle? It was a humongous battle. Long war. Yeah. And, and oh. But you, you felt that you had no choice? I felt I had no choice because the alternative was to accept uh, this, uh, accept the dishonesty, accept the injustice, and I, it just wasn't in me to do that. And did your union help you out? Yes, they did. The union uh, took various <coughs> positions that, uh, uh, well, they did help me. There were leaders in the union that worked on my behalf, that fought for my rights. Uh, every time management did something that violated my rights, uh, there was, or on many occasions, the people in the union stood up for me and said, no, you're not allowed to do that. The contract says this, the law says that, whatever it was. They so actually having a contract provided you more rights than if you were in a non-contract kind of situation. Absolutely. Now, right. management uh, didn't abide by the contract. Uh, I mean, there was a contract. They were obligated to do certain things in accordance with the contract. They didn't do that. But at least we could then point out that they were violating the contract for whatever that was worth. And that we got some mileage out of that. Now, uh, most workers in California are not in unions, mm -hmm. or I mean, in so the country, yeah. eighty-seven and a half percent. Or not. So you're talking that the majority of people have no even contract or union to even go to. So what does that mean for these kind of workers? Nothing. The doctrine of employment at will or whim is what what operates. And if they don't like you on a given day, they can terminate you. They, people have been terminated for not for refusing to sit down to come into a meeting because I'm going to chew you out because I'm your boss. No, I'm not going to sit down. Sit down, sit down. No, no, I'm going to fire you. And they terminate them on it, and they make it stand. These institutions are crazy. It's an upside-down world. So what people can do, three steps, is name it. There's tremendous power in naming it because it legitimizes the function. It legitimizes the experience. If you go down to human resources, like Rhea said, she, she could have, but HR, I got to tell you, HR does nothing to help. They are they're helpless, hapless, toothless, gumless. I can't figure out why HR doesn't really care about their organizations more. But they're not the executive, so they don't cut the they don't make the rules. The point is, if you go down to HR and you do not fit the narrow categories of illegal harassment, what happens is you're treated as an illegitimate troublemaker. Grow a thicker skin. Go back. Learn to cope with him. Don't you understand that's just yeah. how he is? Like a codependent dealing with an alcoholic. Step two, you need to take time off. 
This is in the absence of a contract or a law. And there is no state that has a law, so this is everybody's world um, in the U.S which is an embarrassment. We're the last in industrialized nations to do anything. But step two is take time off. Check your mental health, your physical health, see if any company policies are violated, and then get busy by distracting yourself with building the business case. What Bill did very, very expertly was to show that his nutcase bully was costing the institution and was a blight on the place as opposed to mm -hmm. someone who was a hero. Step three, take that data that you've gathered and you see that distracts you from sitting and mourning the loss because this is, you'd mourn the loss of your identity and the job and the career and everything that you had chosen. And instead of focusing on the loss, you are empowered. I know that word has lost so much meaning because so much management has stolen the word. But it, you will seize back control of your life by building the business case. And step three is go tell them. What Bill did, and why we love Bill, is he took the story up. Okay, I love Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm he, hurt. I love you, man. Okay. <laughs> but what, what I, the reason I always send, I, I love to send Bill to talk to the press, is because everyone is fearful. The worst case scenario thinking is, oh my gosh, what will happen? And that's what the bully wants. Yes! And how could it <laughs> yes, be worse right. than throwing up every Sunday night? You, what they've told you, that is unconscionable. The bully wants you totally terrorized, totally, totally careful, yes. so that you'll just go along and you'll keep quiet and you'll, that's and right. do, you'll do as he says. And that's why they paralyze she. the cult. 58% of the bullies are women. Let's not let them off the hook. They terrorize the co-workers also to make mm -hmm. sure they have no trouble. Don't you see if the group were to just mm -hmm. surround them at the table and say, we know what you did and you're going to stop or we're going to out you. Okay? However, they if, would back down, if, but it's if, so hard if, to do. Yeah, that. if this person gets away with it over yes. and over, yeah. yes. over mm -hmm. a long period of time, mm -hmm. the atmosphere and the record, people see that and say, well, nothing can be done about it. They're this legendary. Is, yeah. This and, is, and, uh, and, and, it's, and you know, and, mm -hmm. and Bill mm -hmm. and I work uh, together at Laney, and, and he's the one who got me into what this bullying is and um, but I also like to say what what was good about Bill is he actually had some conscious people that they were at the level because it cannot be done in a system where even the people the HR people the in my case the superintendent there the superintendent is a bully so they're going to support mm -hmm. all their little bullies um, it's the chain of command they th want there they and and so in this Bay Area school district it's really heavy because it's been there this has been the culture for for 30 years mm -hmm. and so in my case it, it's basically landmark in a sense because it just doesn't happen where anyone prevails and and I prevailed by just having the union contract and being very strategic and and showing that they had violated the um, the, you know, the, the contract, the, the contract and, 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 the and and although they're very they're quite arrogant they're they're quite arrogant and so they will make mistakes along the way too so that's another so you have to you have war. to you're in a war you're actually in a war yes. mm -hmm. a war. you have to be strategic it's your absolutely. job you have to be that became her job <laughs> you're, absolutely. you're in a battle absolutely and the reason I'm bringing that up is it's for the the people who are in an or organization um, like mine where it's throughout so you have to be very very conscious and and strategic because they're they're that arrogant the bully is going to be that arrogant that they're going to make another mistake and that's how they bully they're arrogant I can do whatever I want oh, absolutely yeah, right. they absolutely. An absolutely I have all the power absolutely you have nothing you have nothing and then that's how they've been surviving on the lives of other people in the organization who they're like, I don't want that to happen to me. Look at her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As an example. And this is an example of what happens when her. you stand up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I was 34. I, I, I'm, I'm like Ruth. I had been 15 years with a stellar career as an educator. And it just took one person and right. people that I'd been teaching with for a number of years and, and collegial with, they ran away from me because they... Totally if it can happen to her, mm -hmm. and she has these great evaluations and programs, and if it can happen to her, it may happen to me. 
everybody's vulnerable. Yes, Carrie? and for a serial bully, a uh, target is a notch in the belt. Uh, it is like a war. You know, I, I received shell shock, classic shell shock s symptoms from it. It affected my speech. It caused me to be spastic on the right side of my body when I'm under stress. And um, uh, I was, again, the target of a serial bully. And I'm I mean, this is kind of a criminal thing. This person oh, apparently absolutely. was covering up on criminal. financial absolutely. mismanagement. Yes. And yes. in order to cover up his financial mismanagement, he punished you. Yes, and gets a charge out of it. Uh, this uh, person was known to get people aside who he'd gotten one on and, and in their face say, gotcha. I mean, really... Um, psychopathic. Well, absolutely German... psychopathic. So that's, that's what we're, talking, we're yes. talking about, psychopaths. Yes, Gary can expand in, upon in, that. In, in the, uh, extreme them, yeah. narcissism. It's, it's interesting that Heinz Lehmann, this first German researcher when he was in Sweden, and he writes this first article, and he says that why should work be like a war zone? Thus, post-traumatic stress is was initial... initial uh, Initially. initially. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Categorized as a war wound, but it isn't just a war wound. Mm -hmm. We have people I on the job that are getting this and suffering terribly from it. And nobody should have to suffer that way from going to work. Well, people want to do their job. They want to try to do the best they can. It's and then part of the human they're spirit. They're in this environment yes. where that really becomes impossible. Right. It's and, a and third of your life. That's one yep. of the things I noticed, uh, was mo one of the many things that was most interesting to me was that folks who are targeted, one of the things they most commonly say is, I just want to be left alone to do my do work. My job. Yeah. I know, I felt that extremely yeah. powerfully. I love working with my students, I love creating material, I love what I do, and I was unable to do that. And it was a, a so source of great pain for me, but I talked to many other targets who all told me the same thing. If they would only leave me alone, I could get back to doing what I like to do. But you're not left alone. And one thing I learned from Gary and Ruth's book is that no target chooses to be placed in that situation. Being, be, being a target takes you by surprise. It's so like an ambush. So in it's order to deal space. with this, what you're saying is you have to face it. Oh, there's you no cannot, choice. You cannot go away from it. You cannot try to ignore it. That's an unhealthy way of dealing with, with what you're yeah. facing. Is you, that you, you can't ignore it. They come after you. I mean, when, when you're the soldier on the battlefield and they're shooting <coughs> at you, you can't say, well, there aren't any bullets here, <laughs> because there are bullets there. And one of them is hitting you, or maybe a lot of them are hitting you. You can't ignore it. It's there. And that's what you would say to other people. What you've got you've to deal with it, because yeah. there's no way of getting around it. There, there are times, sure. as an advocate, that we, we tell people, seriously, consider getting another job. If you are in a bad organization, as a wounded uh, target, you're not likely to be able to change it, and you may want to save yourself. You may want to get a new job. Um, m many times, people stay until it's too late until they and have they can't get another job complete, because they're totally destroyed well they're totally so inhabilitate, oh, absolutely. as a result it's of this kind of uh, workplace environment it's terribly hard to interview for a new job while you're stuttering yes. and that's what happened to me and in education also a lot of folks don't realize that even if you try to get out the bullies sabotage you at your next school district. So they'll go after you even if you've they'll got They'll go after you because they really don't want you, they don't want you to be employed. So you going back there to work at the school, oh. they must really, oh. what happened to the bully? Uh, the, the bully bullies. was promoted. The often. bully was promoted. The bully was promoted. <laughs> So is this a common thing that this the, can be that the, people that <laughs> the bully <laughs> was promoted, <laughs> and and the and the strange thing is I'd only met the superintendent one time, and that was at my initiating it, and it was only for about five minutes, and the superintendent talked as if he had actually observed me in in, in my work, and hmm. so. It's really scary because when you try to, in my experience, you try to get out and and they call the school, well, I know a, a few people, they call the, the forwarding school district and they sabotage. So basically they're saying, so we they're want you to stay your, here destroying your and we want to destroy you here. Keep you destroy you and, and so, you're, so you keep, you're totally paralyzed and, and your life is really destroyed. It's, this is, yeah. it sounds like a totally disastrous for yourself, oh. your family. Oh, it I is. I mean, it's, it's really a disaster. And one and of the... Oh, sorry, Gary, go ahead. I was just going to say, Gary and I have talked over 
hundred people on the phone in the last ten years who've talked to us about their cases, these targets, and they say, what should I do? And, and you know, after talking to them for like 20, 30 minutes, I'll say something like, well, you know, have you thought about trying to get another job? And they'll say to me, but I love my job. <laughs> and I'll say, but this is what's happening, and this is what's happening, and this is what's happening. Do you really love your job? And I say to them, the best time to get a job is when you have a job. And like Rhea said, it's so hard not to get that bad rap when you're working. And I always say, try to work it out so that nobody knows you're looking for a job. And try to find a reference that you can get, that you're friendly with. You can give all the list of the things you've done right so you've got your list and use that person as your reference so that that you give yourself in the best light that way because that is one of the big pitfalls of being bullied is when you try to get out of the situation you're blocked you're blocked every and way. I mean apparently it seems if the bully is promoted what they're saying to all the workforce this is good behavior and That's this right. is acceptable this is and you're going to be want. and this is you're going to be rewarded if you do this kind That's of activity right. which leads to a, a, even a further unhealthy situation <laughs> yes. where the people that have bullied are the, then put in charge of more people and it's a, it's a never-ending thing. Now, I mean, you're trying to organize against this. And, Let's talk and about solutions. Okay, solutions. Because the things that, Ruth and I actually um, run a consulting company that actually is brought in by employers who do want to deal with it. So we know how to fix it, but it takes an executive who wants to fix it. The vast majority of American firms don't want to fix it because it's just what you said. Uh, someone's doing my bidding, we've created this legendary status, we've promoted the person, what do we do now? This is obviously what our culture is about. You heard it. I love it that you've all said work environment. That's the code word for European researchers who look at this. But in America, it's onesie twosies. Mm -hmm. Individualism is what allows bullying to thrive. It needs shame and secrecy and picking off people one at a time mm -hmm. and then doing settlement agreements with gag orders so people so don't private. talk so about it. So it's private it. and nobody knows about it. That's that right. A problem. So it's going to have to take a public societal solution to get at it because what do employers respond to? Laws. Let's get real. They didn't sit there and say, Boy, we, our, our women are mistreated. Walmart, two million women. Gee, they're mistreated. We better, we better just craft the policy and do that. No, no. Until there's a law, and it shows you even when the law's there, they'll ignore it. The point is, laws compel employer policies in action. So, we've crafted, with the help of a Boston law professor who came to us seven, eight years, well, came to us in 2000, 1999, and said, eventually you're going to need to have an anti-bullying law go state by state, and until very, very recently, the federal climate has not been conducive to even talking to federal legislators, although we're about to mount a federal campaign, but that takes a little bit more preparation. But since 2003, we have introduced, with, with, we're, Carrie and Ruth and I got the first bill in California introduced. These two women told their stories. I held the Kleenex box. The lawmaker said, you're right, this what, is wrong. What lawmaker was that? Um, he's out of the assembly now. His name is Paul Koretz. So there was a bill introduced in California. AB yes. 1582 in the year 2003. Now it died in committee and didn't go any farther. Now in 11 states since then, well counting California, there have been 11 states adopting 23 versions of the Healthy Workplace Bill. We will have a state eventually push it over and, and, and try and stop bullying. The irony is the bill, the bill ties in the language of work environment and it's called it actually outlaws or forbids an abusive work environment and it never mentions bullying because we know that sometimes if you say bullying it gets snickers and hee 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 oh that's kid stuff this what we've talked about here is, tonight is health, is, not kid is, health stuff. is health and safety yes, yes. For all oh workers. yeah and so it is that yeah. bill that takes our original definition and codifies it so we need to have a law in each state to make employers pay attention to it now bill as a result of some work that you've done uh, you had an article in the San Francisco Chronicle on, on bullying, and also I understand there's a resolution that was passed by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Yes, uh, I, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors just considered a resolution, and I was told that it was passed, although now not 100% sure that it's been passed yet. I think it was. In any case, it does direct... I was present. 
I spoke to the Board of Supervisors. I see. Um, it, it looked on the surface as if um, Supervisor Sandoval would simply offer the resolution and it would pass. And for some strange reason, it was uh, asked to be sent back into committee and studied for 60 days. And uh, Supervisor Sandoval was quite shocked that anyone would suggest that uh, status-blind harassment within the city ranks of, of the city of San Francisco would be okay. Why would anybody, he thought this would be a non-controversial bill, but uh, one of the other supervisors said, oh no, this must go into a committee and be studied. And, and so it has been tabled and we are uh, discussing it uh, tomorrow at the city hall. But it's been recognized, at least by the supervisors, an issue that has to be looked at. It's been recognized by the issue as a, yes. And there were, m there were multiple city workers present to testify at the hearing and so uh, there at are, the board so meeting. So they were saying that there are real problems They in the were city. saying there were real problems and it, they, they were um, they're the most people to speak on any issue at that particular board meeting was that issue. And it went up it, as a blaze. There's, there were so problems. So people are concerned about it. People are job. very and concerned about it. And may I suggest that they probably feared retaliation. That took great courage to come forward. Very and much also so. in the city of Berkeley, uh, California, where I live, Rhea and I and a, a third uh, colleague spoke to the uh, Labor Commission of the City of Berkeley, Commission on Labor, and they uh, have taken some action to publicize the problem of workplace bullying to bring that awareness of that issue to the Berkeley community. So Pro this issue of educating people about what it is, first mm -hmm. of all, that it's not just an individual situation, it's a systemic problem, mm -hmm. and it's a problem of health and safety in the workplace for everybody. Yes. Is, is yes. important. And also that you can't have a productive workplace mm -hmm. if you have a situation yes. in which people are tormenting other yeah, people right. in the workplace. It's the elephant in the labor li living room of the yeah. United States. And uh, do you see, I mean, a apparently there's more interest in it. Uh, there's because a great deal because of there's a lot of problems. I mean, when workers, this happens to workers, they go out in disability. Yes. They yes. go on, is this what happens? They yes. yes. And, 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 and I know specifically, and just in the education industry at the K through 12 level, many of the workers don't even know what it is. And so what, I, what I've done as a result is started an organization that helps school districts to recognize if they're going to have bullying policies for young people that these behaviors need to be in place for young people then if they grow up they become a bully Absolutely. and the superintendent so of a sense, school uh, so absolutely. i'm trying to help them through my organization <laughs> and what's the name of your organization it's behave gateway to civility and dignity in the educational workplace and i want um school districts to see that parallel that if we want our young people to behave on the playground and in the high schools then superintendents principals teachers parents everyone in that community we all need to behave at all levels at all levels you can't just do it for the kids <laughs> you and, can't just and, do it and for have the kids. it for the adults and one of the things that has happened is and we've done other shows on the case of bullying mm -hmm. of, of postal workers yes is workplace violence Mm -hmm. is sometimes the result of this situation. Uh, Dr. Namey, is if it's gone, If it's gone horribly, horribly wrong, they can be. The trouble is we don't want employers to be able to say, well, bullying leads to violence. The target is the likely offender. Much more likely the violence is coming from, and the psychological form of violence is already coming from the bully. The Quebec law in the province of Quebec, the only North American law we have, defines bullying as psychological harassment. So, I mean, it can be considered, and, and NIOSH, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, after 05, has, has considered bullying a form of workplace violence. So the violence is already occurring, but it, the perpetrator is the aggressor, the bully. But the, the, some employers would like to think, well, that's a, that's a soft, thin-skinned uh, uh, target who's going to just explode at any time. What are they going to explode over? Over the frustration from not hearing they're not, that's Oh, I forgot to say that. I think this is an important point. These highly credible, highly skilled veteran workers are not believed. When you first report that you're bullied, the first response of the organization is, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen here. I don't want to hear it. 
Can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be. Not real, not real, not you're real. You're making it up. It's all or unbelievable. Mind. Or they say it's a personality conflict. <laughs> yeah. 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 So a personality <laughs> conflict. That's yeah, they, they don't see it as a case of an attacker that's and the, the person. Uh, and that's uh, a way of really not dealing with it. Is that exactly. what happens when you exactly. say it's a personality conflict? Yeah. And you will hear the opposition to the state laws in every state house we've been involved in. And I must say, I want to credit the California Healthy Workplace Advocates. Yes. The grassroots group here is the best organized. We have a good one in New York. York and one in New Jersey, and not, yeah, New Jersey and Georgia, but the <laughs> California has gone miles uh, beyond every other group, and so more. people are getting organized. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, and people They're, are but educating the them. But the businesses come back with some sort of way to individualize and say it's yeah. just between two people. When what we've all concluded, I think, safely in this roundtable is it's environmental, it's work environment, it's institutional, and sometimes it's industry wide. Well, what was interesting in this video uh, with the teacher is it's, it's the teacher, her problem. It's yes. not a That's systemic right. problem. And, and why would a teacher who's taught there so many years end up being arrested? I mean, it seems it's completely ludicrous. irrational that a teacher ends up in jail for, for kidnapping her students in, so, in a so grammar who, school. I mean, it's just... it's just the culture. That mm -hmm. is the culture. And, yeah. and, and I hope that when folks see the the video of her the and they can start questioning what's actually going on inside of schools because no one thinks that it's going on but it is and so if yeah. students are bullying if students are bullying each other they're getting it from the adult bullies yes yes yeah. so if it's unacceptable at all levels it won't happen among the kids and it shouldn't Absolutely. happen under the adults so that's a real problem the bullying that is permeates That's apparently right. that district, and, and the and the victim is a teacher who actually stood up and said, "No, absolutely, I'm not going to accept this bully." Mm -hmm. Your teacher's bullied. Well, what chance do you I have? Can, yeah. And now here's a radical thought: We're a society that maybe has been endorsing torture. How are we going to send a message that aggression in the workplace is not acceptable? We've got to get back on track to say this is intolerable. So. Anyway, I mean, that's the broadest societal context, and that can confuse the issue. And uh, we're talking but about a healthy environment yes, yes. for working people, Employers for students, care. for society, because an unhealthy workplace environment, from what you're saying, that's is unhealthy right. for your family, it's unhealthy for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. And it loses and money for the employer. Are mm -hmm. they in business to deliver public service in education and, and higher ed, or, or to, to develop a profit? Come on, this is eroding your bottom line. It's eating you alive. So stand up and stop the bullies. They're not that hard to stop, but don't don't cower in fear. And the question too that I think needs to be asked is, why can't if you have checks and balances for me, why can't you have checks and balances for <laughs> everyone? Good point. If it, if it's the superintendent, the superintendent still needs to have checks. Every and everybody has to follow the same rules. Everyone needs to follow mm -hmm. the same rules. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for thank joining you. us tonight, and uh, this is subject yeah, is not going to go away. We're no. go away. We hope not. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.